and welcome to the latest episode of my knitting and creative podcast today i actually have a bit of sewing to share with you as well so that's exciting um i'll put that at the end um this is the first uh normal format podcast i've done in a little while because my last two episodes have been more about um everything i knit last year and my knitting plans for this year so i have started a couple of those plans um i had did I mention any of the ones I had already started in the video? One of them I had. Um, so if you want to find out about the other things that I'm intending to knit this year, then feel free to give that one a watch. Um, so yeah, I hope you're all doing well. I hope January is treating you all well. Um, I'm beginning to feel a bit tired, getting the January tiredness vibe, um, but it's almost the weekend, so that's very exciting. Um, that will have no time relation whatsoever to when you see this video because <laughs> it does take me a few days normally um, to then sit down and edit something and then put it online. So should we start with finished knitted objects? So I have two of those to share with you. I'm on my creaky old chair, I apologise. And so the first one um, are these socks, which I think are called the Tega socks. Probably is not pronounced correctly, so I'll either put it on the screen, if not, I'll definitely link it below. And it's got this gorgeous colour work detail. Now, the pattern is slightly different to what I have done. In the pattern, there is no gap, really, maybe three rows between the colour work ending and the heel so the leg is about that much shorter. Now I have noticed that definitely um, especially this time of year longer socks do suit me better. I used to wear my shorter socks a lot more because um, I was very much a dress with leggings wearer therefore with your leggings on um, none of my ankle ever got exposed. Um, not that I'm against my ankles being exposed but I get cold. Uh, but I have, in the last year or so, become much more a uh, trouser wearer, and I think that's because I've started making some trousers for myself. Um, I've still not found a pair of jeans I'm happy wearing. Um, I just find fixed waistbands on trousers. I mean, I don't think my waist is ever the same size, and I feel like that must be quite common within women, that our waists just fluctuate a lot. So I find fixed waistbands quite uncomfortable that and I like high waisted things and sitting in something that's high waisted if there's no give isn't great um so I have started to discover trousers I do find comfortable so with that I am now starting to have the exposed ankle issue where I do get really cold and I have a bit of that going on today actually so and also um having become Birkenstock not Birkenstock bloodstone boot obsessed I really want these to be wearable with my boots and so I want to be able to see the colour work above my boot I think my boot comes up to about here so you see all of this um, and so I think they're gorgeous the other mod I made probably was the um, construction with the heel flap I do a standard heel flap and gusset the pattern probably had something else I think it was a short row heel the one that looks more like a traditional sock um, but I'm not that bothered about that look. I feel like this is probably more hard wearing for me because of the reinforcement from the slip stitches. And um, the other thing that I did was this pattern has several sizes of like stitch circumferences, the largest being 72. So you get different charts depending on the size you want to knit. Now, normally, I would knit either 60 or 64 stitches on a 2mm needle. However, on colourwork socks, that does not fit over my heel. So what I have done, I cast on 64 stitches in 2mm for the rib. I then switched to 2.25 and increased up to 72 stitches. Did the colour work for the 72 stitch chart, then knit straight. So this is but here, this here is wider than it would normally be, which does concern me a bit that, that is going to work out. Because normally I would decrease um, back down to my 64 stitches after the colour work, but instead I switched back to my 2mm needle. No, in fact, 
I carried on knitting with the 2.25 millimeter needle, so this might be too big for my ankle, which I'm worried means they will slip down. Um, and then when I got to the heel flap, I then switched to my two millimeter needles um, and decreased on on the gusset enough that I would then get back to my 64 stitches by the time I finished decreasing. So by the time I get to here, I'm back to my 64 stitches on two millimeter needles. I also probably did a different toe. I did the barn toe, which is rounded. And it's a bit like a hat. You pull the thread through the last few stitches and tie it closed because I hate Kitchener stitch. So yeah, a few modifications, but I think the colors are absolutely gorgeous. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I initially started using like an entire sock set, but the main color with the sock set, the flex knit were too close to the contrast colors. So you couldn't see the trees. So I had to change. So I ended up using the sock base by Nervous Fiber in the colorway Ha. And then these two contrast colours from Grenwy Fibre Co. And they were in the original sock set. So I think they're a really nice combination. Because there are some very subtle flecks in the um, Nervous Fibre one. Which maybe you can see better on the actual sock. Because it's not like a flat colour. But not enough to detract from the pattern. So I will probably um, knit another pair of socks with the, um, the skein that did come with these. Um, maybe just some basic ones using this for like a heel or something I'm not sure I really like this color so I want to use it in a way that this color really stands out so on the leg not on a heel or toe where I can't see it um, I think this was my favorite out of the two sock sets that I bought so I'm not sure I might do some stripy socks I'm still gonna have a bit of a think so that's my first finished object So these are my Christmas socks, but I didn't finish them until halfway through January um, because I was being really kind of chilled this year about makes and trying not to stress myself out too much for no reason. And my arbitrary deadline of Christmas socks. My other finished object was also made from a yarn that I got whilst I was on holiday in America. I bought this really beautiful rustic um, yarn from Port Fibre in Portland, Maine. I really really like it's like this weird grey brown and um, I've been watching as always um, Heather and Hops she doesn't go by that anymore Cat Weaver um, and she had made this kind of cowl slip thing and then she released a pattern for it and hers looked really lovely so it was two skeins of DK and I don't have that many two skeins of DK I did however buy two skeins of this and I was really umming and ahhing whether to knit it from this or not because it felt like a really special yarn and I wanted to use it for something really nice. Um, and I'm still not sure whether it was the right yarn for the project because I think mine's come out maybe not quite the same as it was meant to. Um, but I have been using it. I just, I have this thing when I have quite a lot of a skein left, I think, oh, I didn't really use it to its biggest potential. So I have all of this left. I don't know what to do with it. Maybe I should just make myself some really beautiful mittens. There is, um, I want to make the underwing fingerless mitts, which is like a dark and then like a, a pale. I think the original has black and white, um, but I think it's a four ply pattern. So I think if I used a thicker yarn, it probably wouldn't come out looking right. Um, it's a shame because actually this color with like oatmeal or just off white would maybe work quite well for me I don't know so I have that left but anyway the finished object this is a rather funny looking thing <laughs> um, okay so it's like a cowl with a front and a back and it's got quite a long neck so I've actually knit one side slightly longer than the other, like the back. I decided I wanted the back to be a bit longer than the front because there's no short rows. And then my partner said, surely you want the longer side on the front and the shorter side on the back because um, your front would want more coverage. And I was like, mm, I actually don't know. So I have to be honest, when I put it on, I don't really pay that much attention to it. Um, but it, it looks like this. Now, I don't think mine came out as wide as hers did because... 
The coverage on the front is really <laughs> narrow on my chest and I think it was meant to come out to here like an extra inch either side. It's a bit tricky to show you. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. I have been using it a lot because I cycle to work and something like this is really good for cycling to work because I can put it underneath my coat. There's no like ends waving around and it does keep my neck nice and snug and warm. And this with a scarf over the top is really snugly. But I do feel a bit silly using it. Like it does feel like a strange thing to wear. I guess because in mainstream kind of fashion there isn't a similar item. It does feel a bit... I'm not really sure. But it is very useful and I do quite like the texture. I think the texture looks really nice. Um, and it is clever the way she does it. You do do some purling when you're knitting flat like you would with rib. But when you get to, sorry when you do it in the round, when you get to working it flat you end up like knitting the whole time um, because the way the stitches worked. And so the patterning is done on the wrong side, not the right side. So it did mess with my head a bit because the thing you had to do, you had to remember to do it on the wrong side, not the right side. And I'm used to the wrong side being the plain row and the right side being the jazzy row. So that did confuse me a bit. But once I got onto the rhythm, it definitely sped up. So I do feel this took me longer than I thought it would. Therefore, I had no willpower to rip back and make it wider because it just took me forever. So, yeah, I don't know. I love the colour. I love the texture. Will I get as much wear out of it as I think? Maybe. I do sometimes resent making really beautiful knits just around my bike to work where no one's going to see them. Um, but, you know, maybe that is nice. So that, that's my thoughts on that. I think that if I was to knit one again, which I might do, I think I would use a thicker yarn and maybe something fluffier. She made hers in Plutolope and that one looked really lovely and squishy and light. So I wonder if unspun is actually the answer. Maybe. Because you don't have to worry about anything like this being hard wearing. It's not anywhere that's going to get much like hard wearing. So it would actually be quite good, I think, for something that feels more delicate. Maybe. Whereas this yarn does actually feel quite hard wearing and rustic and tough. So that's kind of the antithesis of that. I don't know. But there we go. There's that one. The pattern is easy to follow. It is really well written. Um, there was like a bit that I got a bit confused on, but she did give like a breakdown. If you need more support, read this bit. So I found that really helpful. Um, so I do recommend her pattern if you like the look of it. Um, yeah, so my first major whip is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. Now there are two. Um, there is the oversized seasons and the seasons. Not entirely sure what the difference is, but I'm definitely knitting the seasons. But I'm knitting mine to be a bit oversized, hopefully. Um, a viewer did comment last time saying, Am I sure I'm not knitting the oversized the oversized seasons? And I'm, I'm definitely not. Um, maybe it uses a chunkier yarn. Maybe it's got a looser gauge or it's just a bigger jumper. I'm not sure. But I think I looked at what yarns people were using to knit both and I picked this one because for some reason I prefer the look of it. I can't remember why. And I'm reasonably far along. So you do knit it flat and it's in half fisherman's rib. You start by casting on here and knitting a straight like narrow bit and then you pick up and knit the other way and then you pick up along this edge and start knitting down and out and you increase, you increase, you increase, going back and forth, back and forth. So there were some points I got a bit confused and because you're working the button band at the same time as the body of the cardigan, you do have two DPNs attached as well as a cable needle. Now especially at the start, it is faffy, but the further you get in, for some reason the DPNs do stay in a bit better. Um, but it does feel a bit clumsy sometimes, so I definitely found it annoying to start with. Uh, but I think I've kind of got the hang of it now. And I'm actually, I'm quite enjoying it. Um, I have started to get to that point now where I am maybe finding it a little bit tedious. And now I'm just going back and forth, back and forth for the body. 
Um, and I was a bit unsure about the colour, that it might just look like a bit grubby, because it's kind of neither oatmeal or dark. Um, but I tried it on earlier. I put a longer needle on so I could try it on properly. And it actually looked quite nice on with what I had on underneath, so I do actually think it's going to be really wearable. So I'm now, now that I'm settled thinking that I, I don't think I've made any mistakes, I'm going to weave in my ends. Um, but this little yarn really plumps up beautifully when you block it. So I'm really excited for that magic to happen because it really poofs up and fills in all the gaps. It's really gorgeous. So this yarn is um, Gilead by Duram Natura. And this is the colour Prof et Cell. So salt and pepper. I might have told you something completely different last time. So I thought I would bring the um, ball this time. It was actually the colour, I think just Prof, just pepper that I really wanted to use. It was like it was basically this colour to be honest, but they didn't have it in stock when I bought it. It did come into stock by the time I started this, so I, I was really annoying. I should have just waited. Um, but I think this would be a really good neutral and will go with lots of things. Um, the only cardigans I have that I can wear on bare skin are quite bold, like bright green basically. So um, this would be quite good to fill the gaps that that doesn't. And I quite like that this one it's a bit more of like a fashionable sort of shape because maybe I can wear it over things that are a little bit more unusual and then I don't stand out too much. I know I talk about this a lot but um, I do work somewhere where most people dress quite conservatively and so I try not to stand out too much. But um, yeah, I've done my first buttonhole which I think is on this side which I'm not really that happy with to be honest. Um, when she, when I did it the way she said, it looked truly dreadful, um, which is the only thing about the pattern I don't really like, because the button band is one by one rib, knit in the same direction as the body, and this, the buttonhole was a two stitch buttonhole, so that it can accommodate a larger button, and it just looked really ugly, so I do think that maybe she should have, and I looked at all the finished um, projects that other people did knit it, and to be honest, they generally did look a bit messy, and I noticed that most people actually show their cardigans done up, and I wondered if that was to hide the buttonholes. So what I kind of whip stitched around the edge of mine, and it got a bit better, um, but not perfect. But I honestly don't think there isn't actually anything I can really do to make that better, because I need a two stitch, two stitch buttonhole because a small button would look weird on this because it's quite a chunky cardigan. Um, and so there weren't really many options on a one by one rib with two, um, two stitches. So I will whip stitch the rest when I do them. Uh, and hopefully it won't look too bad. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to this being done. I am starting to get a bit bored of it. But I have been working on it monogamously, so I might need to introduce something else into the mix and not focus so much on this. I'm going to knit night later, so I am going to take it um, and hopefully get a bit more done on the body. That would be good. And I'm thinking about maybe doing the sleeves a bit differently. I quite like the idea of it being more of a balloon sleeve, but I wonder if that might limit its wearability and whether I should really mess with the pattern too much because it could get quite confusing. I don't really understand um fisherman's rib so i might end up making a massive hash of it but maybe i could just try but then if i do a balloon sleeve you won't do the decreases until the end so if it does look terrible i'd have to rip the whole sleeve out i don't know we shall see but that's where i'm at with that and then my next whip are some socks that i am knitting in hearth in the hearth sock base by willy mammoth fiber co so you'll probably say that doesn't look any different to last time. It is different. <laughs> it's bigger. <laughs> so um, I knit this bit to start with, which took me forever, because rib does take me forever. And this is on two millimetre needles. But because I have 100 grams of this, I wanted to knit quite a long sock. And this doesn't go very far up my leg. So I was really annoyed because that took me a long time. So I cast on instead on 2.25. 
I 64 stitches, did a one by one rib, or maybe 68, sorry, and then did that for a few inches, and then I did a purl row, and in the purl row I decreased four stitches to get down to 64. So I'm doing 64 on two millimeter, 2.25 millimeter needles. And so I was gonna do what I did on the other one, knit on 2.25 millimeter needles until I get down to the heel flap and then go back to my two millimeter needles. Now this is where I get weird. <laughs> um, I have all of this two millimeter three by one rib knitted already. After doing a gusset, this is conveniently almost exactly the amount that I need for my foot. Add the toe, add the gusset section. So it occurred to me, would there be any way that I could Kitchener, if I took off the rib, could I Kitchener a section of rib into a sock? Can you Kitchener rib? Now I know most people will say, oh yes, but there's not actually that much knitting you've done there. It's not the end of the world if you knit that out. Knit that, rip that out and knit it again. But it really bugs me when that is what I need. It's just on the wrong, on the wrong sock. And I would be like halfway to the sock then, wouldn't I? Because um, I do want to knit the leg quite long. I don't know. I don't know. Or even if I got rid of the rib and this was the bottom part of the leg where it could be a bit tighter. I don't know. Has anyone kitchened rib together? Am I being totally mad? Am I being really lazy? I think I'm not really enjoying knitting these socks because they're so plain and boring. But I would really like to wear them. I think they'd be really nice and comfy to wear and really warm. So I haven't been putting much time into them and that's annoying me. And I feel like if I thought I could be a good way into it, then maybe I'd speed up a bit. I don't know. Tell me if I'm mad. Or tell me if you think it's a good idea to give it a go. <laughs> I'm up for being um, enabled. The other thing is, some of the dye did actually rub off on the inside of um, one of my bags. I had, I had it in a cream bag and that was a mistake. I had to wash the cream bag afterwards. So... I think I need to give them a good, a good rinse when I'm finished. My last knitting whip has not gone very far, but I think I'm going to cast on properly this weekend. And that is The East Wind by Emily Foden. So I bought five plates of Manchalope, which I've actually got behind me. them all. And it's incredibly soft. Much softer than Plotilope. And I would say comparably soft to the um, little bit of Notodum I have. So I knit up this swatch which is really drapey and really light. I can't get over how light this is and really soft. Because it's so soft and the pattern I'm knitting is a jacket. Have I told you what pattern it is? It's the East Wind Jacket by Emily Foden. Which is this one. Um, with hers she uses mohair and I intend to just knit mine out of unspun because when I um, have knit with Plotilope it has got quite a halo so I didn't think I needed to buy mohair um, and I feel like Plotilope is quite rustic and tough but this didn't really feel that rustic and tough so I did try pairing with my mohair cone I have which is cream and it looked dreadful <laughs> so I did around that time then also buy some um, mohair in a sale this is by Cocon, um, and I bought all that was left, which was, I think, three balls? Well, not for the intention of this, but then it arrived, and I thought the colours went together really well. So then I was like, oh, 
I wish I had two more balls and I posted on Instagram and someone did have two more balls and I bought it off them so that was fantastic it wasn't a yarn I could buy anywhere else it doesn't seem to be very popular so it was really like I couldn't just buy some from another shop so I was able to buy it from, from that person they weren't going to use it because it wasn't the colour they were expecting because this colour is called Rust um, but it's definitely like a purpley colour so I should have enough now to knit mine using um, the Manchalope and this so I'm really excited I'm hoping to cast on this weekend and start it does use a contrast colour for like the edging and the pockets but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not probably well for the pockets but maybe not the edging because I can't really decide what colour I would pair with this it might just look really like odd I think I'd rather it was quite plain um, so I'm not sure but yeah I'm really excited to start that and that's kind of all the knitting I have on the go at the moment I don't really have that much on the needles I have my Sophie scarf which I'm still plugging away at like a little bit here and there but I'm a bit bored by it so it's taking a while although I'm on the decreases now so that's positive um, so hopefully that will be done soon and put away for a Christmas gift next year um, yeah I mean I have lots of ideas of things I want to knit if you saw my last video but I'm kind of pacing myself so I don't get too overwhelmed I think if I'm going to be knitting two big garments that's quite a lot of time and I can take my seasons cardigan out to knit out and about but the unspun one I won't be able to so that might take me quite a while um, because I'll have to do it at home um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I'm going with the knitting. If you are interested in sewing, you can hang around a bit longer. Um, I just have two sewing projects to share with you, both trousers. So if you're just into knitting, see you next time. Um, if you're into sewing too, I just thought I'd share a couple of projects that I'd uh, started and finished since the new year. So um sometimes i get sent fabric by minerva which is a fabric website based in the uk and i sew things take pictures and write an article about it in exchange for the fabric they are fabrics i've chosen from a list um that they've shared and there's no obligation for me to choose anything um i tend to wait until i see something that uh, appeals to me and fits my wardrobe and then I do pick it, but most times when they email out and ask, I don't respond. Um, because it would be easy to get sucked into making lots and lots and lots of things. So, I took on uh, two sets of fabric uh, at the end of last year. Uh, one was uh, some linen in this like kind of beige colour. So this is just kind of a light linen. And I decided to make them some full length Winslow clots, which is going to be tricky to show you because they're long. <laughs> so the Winslow clots, they're a trouser pattern. Um, the original one has a zip that I've done in elastic back hack. And the pattern comes for a short length or like a three quarter length and a full length. So I've made the full length of these. And so it's got quite a wide leg at the bottom. Um, they are really comfortable, they fit really well and they look quite dressy. Now I'm not really sure about the colour because I thought the colour would be a bit darker when it arrived. So I've decided um, because this colour is very summery and the garment actually is quite summery, that I would wait until the summer. And if I don't wear them that much, I will over dye them a darker colour. Uh, so, oh, and they've also got pockets. So, I think it was actually quite an easy make and quite dramatic and quite dressy looking. I don't really have that many sort of like nice, when I say nice, I mean clothes you can wear out for a posh dinner or something like that. These definitely fit that bill. Um, I was hoping I could wear them to work, but these would probably be dangerous to wear on my bike. <laughs> Um, maybe if I was wearing something else and then change into them when I got there, they would be possible. Um, but they do feel really swooshy and I do really enjoy wearing them. So that was one thing I made. And I do recommend as a beginner pattern, to be honest, um, especially with the elastic back hack. 
I don't know if a zip might be a bit more challenging, um, but the elastic back is quite straightforward. And you can Google for instructions because they wrote a blog post about it. Um, the other thing I made, which would I recommend as beginner friendly? I'm not sure. I know that people who are beginners have made them. Um, but they include something called flat felt seams, which I found quite fiddly when I first started doing them. But they're not complicated. I think if you took it slowly one step at a time, it'd be okay. But it is these trousers I'm wearing now. Let's see if I can actually show you. It's going to be tricky. Maybe if I stand on the chair. Mm. I'm sorry. So hopefully you can see they've got like a tapered leg, really big pockets on the hips and an elastic waist. And they have these flat filled seams. So these enclose all of the raw edges. So on the inside, there are no raw edges. Um, and I made a pair of these, the pants by So Liberated. And I made a pair a couple of years ago in a dark purple tensile twill and I wore them so much that I wore through them so I have now patched them so I can wear them in the house I can't really wear them out um, and I since made a pa another pair in a dark green tensile linen blend um, I definitely miss my purple ones I'm not sure they do the fabric anymore otherwise I would just buy more fabric and make another pair exactly the same uh, I just love them and so I thought I would make some out of an orange linen because I have some orange dungarees I wear a lot that I dyed. I have an orange jumpsuit and an orange dress I wear quite a lot. But the jumpsuit and the dungarees, sometimes I just want to have something on my bottom half and not my whole body, um, especially at the moment. I know with layering and things I find it a bit easier. Um, and so these have been really good and to be honest I've lived in them. So they're quite a thick linen, so hopefully they'll be quite hard wearing. Um, but I really recommend that pattern. Um, mine, I should say, I made the slim hack. So that was also something that um, if you Google, I think you can find instructions. So mine are a lot thinner, like slimmer, I think, than the original pattern. Um, but yeah, I, that version is the version I've always made and I really like. And I kind of forget that that's not how the pattern actually is. But yeah, that's what I've been up to, that's what I've been making. Um, so a bit of a shorter episode today, but I wanted to share with you because I'd been talking a lot about future plans and past plans and I didn't want it to be two months before doing a normal episode because otherwise it would probably go on forever. Um, and I also wanted to share with you a bit about our trip and holiday we took for my birthday earlier in the month to a cabin. We went up to the Peak District and did some walking uh, so hopefully I would have already or about to share with you some footage from that trip. So lovely to speak again and hopefully I will be able to catch up with you soon. Thank you.